Hello guys, Riley here. I'm back on YouTube again to show you guys off a new thing that I bought not that long ago, which is a uh, backwards compatible PlayStation 3. Um, the easiest way to tell if you're looking for a backwards compatible PS3 is if it has four USB ports on the front. Um, that is the sure tell way. Uh, my system's serial number is a CECHE01, um, which means that it's the 80 gigabyte model. The difference between the 80 gig and the 60 and 20 gigabyte backwards compatible models is that the 60 and the 20 gigabyte essentially had the PlayStation 2 CPU and GPU chip soldered onto the motherboard, which basically meant that pretty much every PS2 game is guaranteed to work on it. The 80 gigabyte actually removed the CPU chip and kept the GPU of the PS2 in. So basically you have half of a PS2 inside of here, and then the other half, the CPU is emulated. So it caused basically some games not to work anymore. Uh, this PS3 is designed to be able to play around 90% of the PS3's library of games, while the 60 and the 20 gig, which is the A01 and the B01, are designed to play uh, basically a uh, 100% but yeah, so we're going to turn it on, so I can show you guys off. Uh, let me turn this light off. And uh, yeah, it is pretty loud, since it's modded. I would recommend fan modding your PS3, because the original PS3s are very prone to hardware failure. Um, I had this hooked up in my room on HDMI, but now I had to hook it up down here on this old CRT, because... This PS3 is overheating in my room because of the summer heat. So I'm only going to be able to rehook this up once it gets colder around winter upstairs in my room, or I'll have to move my HDTV down here. But, um, yeah. Uh, I did feature a video on my channel called How to Play PS2 Games on a non backwards compatible PS2 that's modded. I sold that PS3 to get uh, a newer TV because my older TV stopped working my plasma TV. So I got a newer HDTV in my room, but then I went and I bought an actual backwards compatible one that's not, that wasn't modded, and it could still play PS2 games. So yeah. So if you press start and select, you'll be able to check the temperature right there. As long as it stays under 70 degrees, you're fine. Um, these PS3s are prone to overheating, which is why I strongly recommend if you buy them, you mod it and make the fan loud. I know that it's kind of annoying, but if you have like headphones you can plug in here or turn the volume up on the game, it's not really a big problem. So I have, I don't have any PS1 games down here to check, but every single PS3 can play PS1 games, even the slim PS3s, uh, when they're not modded, because it was only PS2 compatibility they removed. PS1 compatibility still works, and the main reason why PS1 compatibility still works is because the PS3, the cell chip, has code has a code in it to emulate the PS1 games. So they never got rid of that. So let's test out a uh, PS3 game, obviously, since it's a PS3, might as well. Um, I got Fear. I also got GTA 4, but I figured I'd show off a different game. Um, okay. Let's go to the menu. I'm actually kind of used to the sound of the fan. The farther away you are from the system, then the not as loud as the fan is. I'm like right up to it, though. That's probably why. But um, since this is a backwards compatible model, I can just play the PS2 game straight from the disc. I don't have to go through all that tutorial I showed people on and on one where you have to burn the game. Because if you don't burn the game and try to start up the disc, it'll crash the whole system. Because it's not designed to do that. But yeah, PS3 games work. I'm trying to one-hand this, so you guys are going to have to just deal with that. Yeah. Um, if you guys want me to mod your PS3s, like if you have a slim or a fat, I will do it for like maybe like 10 or $15 if you guys email me or comment on the video. Um, I will warn you though, if your system stops working because I modded it, I'm not going to pay 
to replace it because whenever you mod a system you do take the risk of bricking it so if it does get bricked i can't you can't really blame me for that okay like i warned you you took the risk now i've modded three ps3s and mine mine i modded this one and the other one and uh they've never been bricked they never they never broke so I wouldn't worry too much about it breaking. It's like very rare that it happens, but it can still happen. So, but I still would really not worry about it. And also, if you press the PlayStation button, you can check the temperature up there. As long as it doesn't get 70 degrees, then you're fine on the cell. Um, for the fat ones, I think for the slims, they can handle going 70 because they have a better cooling system in the system. But yeah. Let's take the disc out. The PS5 is meant to be backwards compatible with PS3, 2, and 1, and 4, but the 3, 2, and 1 compatibility is horrible because they're going to do it through streaming, which is really pissing me off because not everyone has fast internet. So if you try to stream the game, it's going to lag. Why can't you just put the freaking disc in and it works? I just don't get it. That's what Microsoft does. So for PS2 game, this is the big thing right here. We're going to test this game out, Legend of Spyro. This game's actually, this is considered the hardest Spyro game ever made, and um, part of a trilogy that's actually really underrated. I've beaten all three games, but uh, I, I bought this game new for like $60 sealed, and uh, I, I just 100% completed the game on here actually. So we'll put it again, because this is the big killer right here. This is where we're going to determine if it's compatible or not. There it is, PlayStation 2 format disc. Now before we do that, um, whenever you're starting up a PS2 or PS1 game, you want to create a memory card for PS1 or PS2. So for my PS2 card, I have it set to slot 2. So yeah, for example, these are all my saved games for PS2 games that I play on here. There's my Spyro data. And then I was just playing San Andreas a couple days ago. What the fuck did I just press? the fuck did I just press? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck did I just press? What did I just press? Okay, now I'm confused. It seems to work fine. I pressed circle and it brought up something. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay, I'm confused. What does no SC mean? Hold on, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, it seems to work fine. But I am really confused what I pressed. Okay, I guess we'll just continue with the video. I'm just freaking out right now. Whatever, I just clicked. Whatever. Okay. Your controller will turn off every time you start a PS2 game. That's normal. So let's turn it back on again. And the screen comes up. PlayStation 2. There we go. Oh, you can't see it, but it's that spiral right there. The glare is causing problems. I would rather have done this on my HDTV, but like I said, it's really, really hot up in my room. I don't want to risk overheating this thing because they're really expensive to repair. The L light of death. Here we go, PlayStation 2 game. So we're going to load up our game. Once again, to show you that it is on a PS3, bring the menu up. There it is. Right there. I don't know what I pressed earlier though, which is why I'm freaking out, but... Maybe I can go into my custom firmware settings. Okay, so we got this intro. We're going to try and skip it as soon as we can. There we go. Press L1 to skip. But um, since I did 100% this game, uh, if you press down on the L3 button, you can play as Dark Spyro.
which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, PlayStation 2 games obviously work. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna have to figure out whatever I, the, <laughs> whatever I did to <laughs> turn no sys on. I don't even know what that means, but this, at least the, the console's still working. I'm gonna figure out what it means. Um, but yeah, we'll take the disc out, we'll turn our controller back on, because when you quit the game it also turns the controller off, but yeah. So yeah, that is a backwards compatible PS3. I'll do a video on what kind of PS3 I would recommend buying if you're looking for a backwards compatible one. I would, uh, strongly, strongly recommend that you guys get a- oh, now it got rid of the Gnosis thing. I would strongly recommend if you're looking to get a backwards compatible PS3, you get the Cheka E01 model. Even though they're not as compatible with PS2 games because it uses half emulation, half hardware. Because a lot of people are always like, get the 60 gigabyte, get the 20 gigabyte, because it has a whole entire PS2 inside of it. It's not using any emulation at all. The reason why I recommend these ones is because they're more likely to live and not die on you. They can still die a lot. Like, they still have a high chance of dying on you, but you stand a better chance with it staying alive. Um, I mean, this PS3, you have like a 50-50 chance if you have like an original PS3. I've had this thing for like months and it still works. Um, I used to have a 60 gig when I was a little kid. It probably yellow lighted because I don't know what happened to it. Because um, it was at my dad's house. But um, I don't know whatever happened to it. But yeah, so I'll do another video, guys. Um, if you do want me to hack your PS3, uh, you'll have to tell me what your serial number is. Uh, on the back of it so I can confirm that it's hackable because some are hackable and some aren't and if you try to hack one that's not hackable you can it'll just kill it um and then like I said before if I do hack it and something goes wrong I'm not responsible for it because whenever you do mod systems you take the risk of it being bricked but it's a very very slim chance that it's going to happen so yeah I'll see you guys later